Welcome back, everybody. It's great to see everybody again. Uh, I've missed you guys. We didn't have a call, or we didn't have a meeting or chat about Tottenham's last game because they didn't. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't personally been watching the England internationals. All I want to make sure is that Kane and all our guys don't get injured. So, um, so what we're going to talk about today is a few different things, really. I wanted to talk about how you think we did in the transfer window, whether you think we had a good or a bad transfer window. Then I want to talk about our son and how he's on fire and where he's doing really well. I just want to give the viewers a bit of his background and where he got to where he is now. Then let's have a chat about Gareth Bale and whether we think he's going to be fit, what position he's going to play in, how do we see it working out with Kane and Son, etc. And lastly, we'll talk about West Ham and the prediction because they've had a couple of good wins against Wolves and Leicester. So it's not going to be as easy as you think. So that's the running order for today. Remember, guys, um, Jamal... As Jamal says, but I'm going to say this, Jamal can say it later. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Please do talk to us. Tell us what you want to, you know, talk us, want us to talk about. And we will definitely try and do that because we're, we're really impressed by you guys' views and all the comments. So I'm really happy about that. So let's start first with the transfer window, which is finished on Monday. I'm going to go to Jamal and say, Jamal, what do you think? How was our transfer window today? Did you... I think I think we uh, we had a fantastic transfer window. I mean, best best I can remember since since we sold Bale, I would say. Um, and uh, I think the quality of players since then we bought established players as opposed to up and coming players. Um, I mean, if I had to give it a rating, absolute ten out of ten. You know, only thing I would say we missed was a, was a defender, which I'm I'm sure most of you would agree. Okay, good. Kamal, uh, I don't agree. With I'm, I'm absolutely. Um... Jamal's absolutely right. It was an incredible transfer window. Whether we have got enough in to win the Premiership uh, and trophies remains to be seen. I think the defender that we are targeting from Swansea seems to have a lot of skill and pace and probably is what we are missing and hopefully not the Bambi-like features of some of our defenders. However, I mean, I'm very excited with the front three. As they say, that front three with Bale in it, it's probably going to on fire, probably the most deadliest on the planet. Okay. Uh, Steve? Um, I think it's been very positive. Um, however, uh, <laughs> um, we've obviously got Hart uh, and Bale. You don't normally mention those two in the same sort of phrase, really. <laughs> but they are, I think somebody described you know, Hart as a, uh, a West Ham reject. I'm not sure I would describe Bale as a Real Madrid reject, though. Um, I do wonder about whether or not it's good to go back. Um, it's seven years since he was with us. And, you know, he's all pace, isn't he? I'm really looking forward to see, see if that's still, that's still there. But at the same time, the idea of having um, a forward line that involves um, Bale, Kane, Son, or including uh, Mora. I mean, if you're a defender in an opposing team, you must be terrified, mustn't you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's Absolutely. definitely impressive. But from my point of view, I think we had a great transfer window. I mean, I can't believe it. One thing we can discuss, we can have a chat about later, but how come all of a sudden Daniel Levy's got all this money to spend and he didn't have any money with Potts, you know? But I think that's more to do with the manager than anything else. But right. that's one thing. From my point of view, I think we had a great one. I mean, Matt Doherty, once he settles in, is going to be a great signing. Regulon, we all know he's great. Uh, Bale, I think Bale, I take Steve's point, he should never go back, but. The thing is, he wasn't doing anything at Madrid and he really wanted to come back to Spurs. So I think it, it can't um, go wrong. Even if he yeah. plays a few games and does a little a little bit, not too much, mm -hmm. never going to be so, any the fans. I think even if we get 20, 30% of the top bail in whenever it was 2013, I think that's better than most players anyway. So I'm really... Yeah. We're going to talk about Bale, though, aren't we? Yeah, we're so, going to talk about yeah, Bale. Yeah. Just to say, I add to that, what I'd like to add is... I think that the this transfer window taken with the January transfer window is an interesting one. Because, I mean, why did we sign Getson Fernandez? Um, why did we keep he's, Getson? He's just a loan-in player, though. Um, he was always... Yes, there for but, a but, I mean, we're bringing in, we brought in a number of players um, on that, uh, on that mm -hmm. front. I'm also interested to see, talk about, uh, as part of the transfer window, some of the players that have gone out and haven't gone out. Like, for example, we all expected maybe Delhi would have gone. Sessegnon, I mean, what a great player he potentially could be. Let's hope that that, uh, that move to Germany is going to show that and we'll have somebody to look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that, guys? Well, in answer to your question, if I can answer... Well, the tra transfer window is just, is not, it's about 
uh, loans that we we put out as well, isn't it? So I know Skip has gone as well, yeah, um, as well as the Lusignan, who I thought Parrot. was a, a sort of a Winks type, you know, shuttler in midfield. You still need those players. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sort of feel slightly disturbed about Sessignon because I thought, was he really given a chance? Was he given a run? I'm not sure, really. I, I think Sessignon may be the replacement for Davies because he wants two people for each position. So I think Ben Davies is probably going to be replaced by Sessignon. I think I think it's interesting because we've got Regulion on um, for uh, it's just kind of a loan essentially. If he does well, Real Madrid are going to come back and swoop him back up. Yeah. Which which at that point, you know, hopefully Sessignon has proved his, his worth in in Germany and ready ready to come in. And, you know, just take up that position. Mm. He's so still our player. Marks out of ten. I'm going to give it an eight. The only thing that would have put the icing on the cake, we've got a screen here from Inter, but I'll give it an eight out of ten, which is pretty good. Kamal, what do you think? Well, I've gone along with that. So far, I'd, I'd say seven until we sign the Swansea defender, then I'll give it a nine. Because okay. the window is not closed technically yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah no, I, I, I agree with Kamal. Uh, I'm afraid. Yes, I agree with Kamal. Yeah, we're going seven. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think I think that's unfair because uh, we're also forgetting like uh, we completed the signing of of Los Celso. We didn't have to purchase Los Celso, but that's that's that part of this. January. Cylinder. That was in January. We, that we completed the 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 purchase was this this um no, like no, we bought him on loan. That, that, that was in January. January. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, that's fine. All right, no worries, guys. Let's not to spend too much time on it. But <laughs> I think we all agree we had a really good um window, much better than previously. So we're all happy on that. Now I want to chat a bit about. Uh, Hung Min Sun, and this guy's been on fire for the last few weeks. He's got how many goals? Come on, he's got four or five goals in the Premiership, six goals, six and four goals games. in the Premiership. So, let's talk about where his background, where he came from, where his time in Germany, and you know, now he's doing great things for Spurs. So, give the viewers a bit of an idea of his background, where he came from, what he did. So, um, go ahead. Well, I'll kick off then. I mean, obviously, you know, he was um, South Korean footballer. Uh, probably the, the greatest export to come out of Asia in football in history is what they're describing Son as. Um, I mean, he, he's been pretty much pretty incredible in everything that he's done over the years. He moved to Germany when he was 16 to Hamburg from FC Seoul. So he definitely had the potential and then moved to um, Leverkusen in, in 2010 um, for, for what was 2013. Then, uh, 2013, sorry. Yes, um, when he was for a club record at that time of 10 million euros. Um, when he came to Tottenham in 2015, he was uh, um, paid, we paid 22 million pounds for him, which is the most anyone had ever paid for a footballer from the Asian subcontinent, which is pretty, pretty incredible, really, if you think about it, you know, from what he has managed to achieve. In terms of his record, in the Bundesliga and in the Premiership, he scored over 101 goals in 305 games. I think his start at Tottenham was very slow. And if we go back to the beginning of the 2016-2017 season, he went in at the beginning of the season to see uh, Mauricio Pochettino and asked for a transfer, which is not very widely known. Um, and he asked for a transfer because he wasn't getting any game time. But who actually so, signed him for Spurs? <coughs> Pochettino, I believe. Pochettino signed him, okay. Mm -hmm. And he, um, Pochettino then sat down with him and decided that he should fight for his place so that he should stay. And then he came on, he played against Stoke and I believe he scored a couple of goals when he went on and, and had a quite a blistering time. But as you all remember in the 2016, 2017 season, he didn't really play that much. It was not really until I think when Kane got injured in the following season when Son sort of seemed to burst onto the scene and take over um, that role because we were very short in that area. Having said that, I mean he's had a he's had a, he's been he's a very interesting character. He's single. He's refusing to get married until he retires from football. He's obviously he's a bigger icon in uh, Korea than a lot of the K-pop bands, and the people that he has dated have been K-pop bands members. Um, and it, and it, and he has an adulation where where if anyone who's been to Spurs in the last year or two will probably see something yeah. like you know twenty to thirty percent of the crowd is <laughs> Korean all there just because of Sun. So in terms of financial strength and what he's brought into the club is 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 phenomenal, yeah. really. Has he always um, been a striker? 
Well, winger, winger stroke, and striker. Bottom as a winger, right? Yeah, bottom as a winger, winger so, but he's, he's basically a winger stroke striker. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to say is he has had suffered a lot. He suffered a racism in England, a lot of racism. When he was at, um, played against Millwall in the 2016 2017 game in the Cup game, every time he got the ball, typical Millwall, they shouted out DVD. Um, and they kept saying to him, you know, pay for three, get five or something as a reference to um, uh, but, uh, stolen DVD, you know, these, these pirate DVDs that you can buy. It's just, it's just pure, pure and utter racism. But I think someone like Son and his personality, he took it really well. He's always got a smile on his face. And he seems to have that kind of personality, which is shows people that he is um, very humble and very, you know, got a lot of humility about him. And uh, um, I think he's been a great asset to the team. Jamal, do you want to add to that? Well, I think you, you covered a lot of it and it was like, it's, it's perfect. Um, Son is, we're lucky to have him. I think a lot that, that came through in the All or Nothing documentary is, is as well as being humble, he's a, he's a fighter too. So, you know, it's good to see his fire. He's, uh, he's one of the same, of the same cloth of someone like Harry Kane, you know, the, he wouldn't get to the level that he's at now if he didn't have that determination, that want, want to play every single match. And, um, you know, hard work gets him to where he is. It's good to okay. see. Um, Steve, let's get your view on Son before I, I, I sort of... Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, he did start slowly at Spurs. I've looked at some uh, YouTube stuff before he joined us and thought, mm -hmm. oh, he's going to be absolutely fantastic. But of course, you only get the very best on, or, or generally on, on YouTube if people are looking at a particular player. So I think it was a slow start for him. Um, having said that, I mean, clearly his pace is his biggest, probably his biggest strength. But he can also use either foot. He can go left or he can go right. Um, I, I mean, I think he, if, if you look at two goals he scored, which stick out in my mind, was one against Chelsea, where I think he left David Luiz on his backside, um, and the one last season against Burnley, which were oh, just... You can't, you can't not talk about you that. Don't, you, you don't see goals like that anymore. You know, they, they were exceptional. No, I think he's, he's an absolutely fantastic player. The one criticism you have is sometimes he loses possession, but mm. it's fairly high up the pitch, so it's not as important as if he was on the uh, halfway line or in our half. Um, and you sometimes think, could he just be a little bit stronger, a little bit firmer? But I'd forgive all of that for his pace and his technical ability. Um, you know, he can use left or right, and he can follow volley, half volley with either foot. I think he's a fantastic player and a fantastic asset. Um, it's interesting about his personal life as well. I think his father was a mediocre professional footballer um, who clearly supported him and pushed him and, you know, um, or possibly <laughs> over-dominated him. I don't know to pu push him in that direction. And I don't know, does he still live with his parents? I think he might do, uh, even at 28, um, which certainly is unusual for footballers. Not but, so much um, in the Asian culture, I would say. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's that's part of it. But, you know, and I know this is probably as, as racially stereotyped as many, uh, as others, is that he does play with a smile on his face, doesn't he? You know, you see him interviewed after a game, it's a joy. You know, and that's just the way he is. He enjoys seems to football. love football. Genuinely yeah, enjoys. Yeah. I mean, he's almost, that, that... he's almost like a, a fan who's turned into mm -hmm. a player, which, you know, yeah, all exactly. of us would have loved to have done. No, exactly. No, thanks Unfortunately, for we weren't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, going back to my thoughts, you know, echo everything you guys have said. I mean, you know, left foot, right foot. I've never seen him score with a header, but I don't know if he has ever scored. He has, he has scored with a header. Yeah, yeah. It's rare, yeah. but he has. I mean, obviously, you know, he's a great player. He's got a bit of a mean streak in him. He's been sent off a couple of times, so something like that. Unfairly, in my view. Unfairly, in my view, too. Uh, Very unfair. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but it is what it is. You know, they didn't get. They didn't get rescinded on appeal or anything, so... One did. I think yeah, that, the, yeah, the Everton one, one did. Yeah, yeah, I think that did. The, the one over at Chelsea was definitely not sending off. I don't know why I'm there, but anyway. But listen, he's a great player. Um, sometimes he can be a bit too uh, greedy when the pass is on and he doesn't pass it. But I guess all, all people, when they're scoring goals, they want to keep scoring goals. So I wouldn't yeah. hold that against him at all. No. But all in all, he's a great player. And, you know, we're lucky to have him. And I think he could be, you know, do really well for us again. I mean, just... One more fact, um, he's the only Asian player uh, of the Asian subcontinent to ever be nominated on the 30-man shortlist for the uh, Ballon d'Or, as they well, call it, you know, the mm -hmm. great thing. So that in itself is... And he's obviously been um, Korean Player of the Year 
almost every year since he's been playing. No, I mean, Asian Footballer of the Year, sorry, uh, every year since he's been playing, which so is um, in itself. Of the Korean national team. Sorry? Yes, he's a captain. He is captain. Was he, he nominated for the Ballon d'Or? Sorry? Was he, yeah, was he nominated for the Ballon d'Or when he was playing for Spurs? Yeah, 2019. Oh, right, OK. Nice. No, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. I think the other thing, just to finish on that, and I think the reason why we are probably highlighting Son today is because of this great partnership that he's formed with Kane. I mean, one of the biggest criticisms most Spurs fans have had of Son and Kane partnership is they didn't really understand under Pochettino how those two could play together. And there always seemed to be a bit of a disconnect. And one of the reasons why Son probably didn't do as well as he did in the early days, because I don't think Pochettino actually worked that out. I however think that one thing that um, uh, Mourinho has been fantastic at is actually working that out, getting them to play off each other. Now we've got that partnership that we had in the 2015-16 season between Delhi and Kane. We've now got Kane and Son, where Kane drops down deep, passes it to Son, Son gets a couple, returns the favour to Kane, Kane gets a couple. I mean, you know, it's uh, I've never seen that partnership apart from the last four games of this season. I don't know what you guys think. Well, I mean, if I could just quickly get in there, I've not seen a son. The son drop deep and then feed Kane. They normally he normally lays off assists from the wing or the box. I've never seen he him drop deep. Has yeah. he got that in his locker to drop deep like Kane does? I, think, I don't yeah. think so. I think Son leads the line when Kane yeah, can drop deep. Yeah. I've seen him drop a few times, but anyway, I mean, I just think that he's got a good the pass. Them, they seem someone the managerial stuff have worked out how to get them to play together, and that in itself is a pretty good skill. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, no, I, I, no, I, think, I was going to say, I think that's because Kane is dropping where he didn't before. He wanted to be up on the last man, pushing up, getting the goal. I think his, it shows a degree of maturity to say, well, actually, it's more about the team. I can step back. I can play a pass, which others can't in the team, really. Mm -hmm. We know that. I honestly so think I think I think that's the reason why they're they're being productive. And I, I've got I, I mean this is a prediction. I think Son will score more goals this season than Kane. Yeah. But I don't care about that. Doesn't matter. No, absolutely. <laughs> don't forget the goals. So uh, one last thing on that. Son has 164 Premier League appearances. He's on 59 goals with 34 assists. He's doing he's doing well for himself. He's mm -hmm. probably gonna hit that hundred within the next couple of seasons. Uh, and we have him until 2023 because he did sign an extension of his contract a couple of years ago. So that's uh, from the new five-year contract, having asked for a transfer uh, in 2016. Uh, so that's all credit to him. That's I think great. we keep him till he retires. He's going to be 31 then, Kamal. I wonder if the pace goes, what's he going to do? Is that well? My view is is that even if he became a um, coming on in the last half an hour or whatever, then what he does for the club in terms of his international reputation and the money that he brings in in terms yeah, of the club and everything else is worth think, yeah. as much. I yeah. think Stevie pays for himself in shirt sales and stuff like that. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, guys. Listen, that was a really good discussion about Son. I'm glad we we had that. I think he merited it for all the great form that he's been having. What I want to talk about now and what you, I want you guys to talk about is Gareth Bale. Um, the reports in the media that he's getting close back to fitness. We've seen pictures of him at Spurs Lodge for training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's assume, let's make the assumptions he's going to be fit potentially for West Ham. Jamal, what do you see happening there? What do you, let's assume he's going to fit and he's going to play. What formation do you think we're going to have there? What is he going to play? What is he going to bring? I think he slips right in for, uh, for Lucas Moura. I think it's Matt Fortin to think about <laughs> Kane... Son and and Bale all start and it's, ooh, like you know a childhood dream I suppose <laughs> everything coming everything's coming dream, together huh? I know I'm just ready I'm waiting for it I'm waiting for it to go and um, one of Bale's standout goals uh, for me is is probably the season before he left we were losing to to West Ham I think it was or maybe it was tied one one he gets the ball in 89th minute does the little pirouette turn like 30 yard strike it it was it was a magical moment and I'm hoping to see more more of that kind of Bale. He doesn't have to do it all the time, but every once in a while, it's some magic. Uh, I'm think, sure. I'm sure he'll bring it. I think one thing we're going to get from Bale is he's going to turn up against the big teams because he's a big match player. The top six, you know, Bale is going to be there, wanting it and, and being able to and bringing his expertise that he's done from. He's a born winner now. He's won so much stuff with Madrid. He'll bring that to the dressing room and to mm -hmm. the team. Come on, what do you think? I think you nailed it. I mean, for me, the, in, what I see him as is, uh, um, in a mili if we look at it in military terms, I see him as a surgical strike. Uh, comes in as a SEAL team, 
undercover comes in against the big big problems that we have and uh, surgically knocks them out and then disappears back into the background and they wonder <laughs> what the hell just happened to us. Uh, because, I mean, let's face it, do we want to see Bale on a, on a cold night in a, uh, uh, against Stoke in midweek or whatever in the, in the Carabao Cup? Probably not. Do we want to see Bale knocking the crap out of Manchester City in Liverpool? Probably yes. So I would like to see a lot of that. I also read that he is going to be um, he is 100% match fit. Today, I read that this morning. Um, when should he come on? Where he should come on? Definitely on the right side, even though he could play on the left side. I'm really excited to see how he creates goals as well, how many goals he creates for Kane. I mean, you know, let's face it, Kane is a finisher. Son was on fire. If you've got Bell delivering crosses and balls in, right, it's going to be incredible. And the thing that really excites me, and to be perfectly honest with you, is for once, since Ericsson's been gone for a while, Ericsson really lost it for a while, but since Ericsson really, we'll have somebody who knows how to take a free kick. Who knows mm -hmm. actually, where actually it's not, you know, a free kick normally results in a ball hitting one of their players, them running off and scoring against us. We hope we don't get them because we never score from them. Yeah. We haven't had nobody who can really threaten the goal from a free kick. I mean, when was that, does anyone remember last time we scored? Scored a, a goal from a, from a, from, from a uh, set play like that directly. One. I mean, this you know, isn't... we are probably the, the worst uh, record of corners and free kicks in terms of getting goals, right? And that's probably cost us the points because we get the free kicks, we get the corners, we just don't convert. And I'm hoping that that will really make a difference with Bell. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, uh, just... Just following on from sort of Kamal's last last point about um, corners and free kicks, yeah, definitely we need we need someone who's uh, very capable at that. Uh, at the moment, I my my sort of views were if we got a corner or a free kick, Larissa better get ready. It better get yeah, on exactly. <laughs> That's the sort of feeling I got. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm hoping we're going to get a Gareth Bale from 2013. I I don't think we can. It's not possible. However, as an impact player as Kamal said, in terms of playing big teams, I think he's going to be invaluable. Um, I sort of, I love Mora. I love his commitment. I love his effort and all the rest of it. But of course, he's not, he's not Bale. Um, but we'll mix it up because we're going to need both of those players for the long um, extended season that we're going to be facing. Um, I think that, um, yeah, I think he will be played on the right. That's his favoured position, I think, and cutting in and, and um, scoring a 30-yarder in the 89th minute, which he did, it appears to be almost every game in 2012-13. <laughs> so I reckon, I, I think against West Ham, he'll come on 20, 30 minutes to go. I think that's what will happen. Unless somebody's injured or the game hasn't panned out in the way you'd expect. But as a game changer at 20 or 30 minutes, I think that's when we'll see him. So yeah. let me ask a question here. I mean... Do you think he can play? I mean, this is just an open question to everybody. Can he play uh, up front on his own? Uh, if Kane wants to rest or Vinicius is not cutting it, can we play Bale up? Is he a forward player or not? Um, right. I think what, what he does have, he's, he's very good in the air. So he could be, you know, a target player if you really wanted to mix it up. Yeah. Um, you know, push comes to shove, you could do that. But I mean, I think if we were to do that, we'd already be in trouble, wouldn't we? Really, which we were yeah. happy to I run that. that approach. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget he joined us as a left back, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, so it gives him some versatility. Yeah, Jamal, let me ask you a question. Do you think you know Mourinho wants his whole team to be defence? He says we defend from the front all the time. Do you think Bale is going to buy into that and start defending or not? I, I think. I mean, I, I think we haven't given Mourinho his. Uh, like he he clearly wants us to all defend as a team, you know that's that's his mentality as a as a manager. But I think we've been attacking pretty well now that we've understood what he wants now that the formation has gelled. You know, I think we always go in looking like we're playing a four three three, and you know everyone adjusts from that depending on the how the match is going. But um, I, I don't think I don't think Bell has to worry so much about running back, tracking back. He's not going to do the Lucas Mora job. Like That's what Mora brings to the team. He's very tenacious. He's going to go back. But I think that's why we've seen um, two central defensive mids every single match. I don't think he cares so much about their those attackers tracking back. As long as they're doing a bit of the job, as long as they don't have to do it all the time. I mean, hmm. I'll bring you in in a minute, Kamal, but I think one of the things that Jose still, you can tell why his voice is really upset that they haven't been keeping clean sheets. So he's still hard on the defensive side. 
Come on, you think Bale will? It's just going to be like a free will. Doesn't have to defend, or is Jose going to ask him to do some defending? I think he's going to ask him to do everything because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, I've seen Bell in uh, many of his, you know, since he's been back and he actually looks happy. I mean, if anyone saw him in the last few games at Real Madrid where basically he was sitting there with a the newspaper over his head or a towel on his head, you know, not even looking at the game. Uh, I mean, his treatment is very, and I don't care, it's not about the money in this terms some at some stage it becomes about self-esteem it becomes about respect and it comes about being able to wanting to prove something right and bell was one of our in the past our greatest players that we've had but we won nothing right he's got something to prove yeah he really has got i think that's going to be if he can come back and make us win a trophy you know that's the ideal thing so um final thoughts on bail then in terms of you know what do we think you know Come on, just sum it up in a few words. What do we expect and what do we hope? I, I, w- I would expect, you know, 15 to 20 goals, um, a lot of assists and um, a d- defending from the front, as Jamal says, by keeping the possession and uh, taking the pressure off us. Because one of the problems that we have had, which has not been a Spurs thing for the last few years, is handing over possession in the way that we've handed over possession. If Bell allows us to keep some of that possession and stop having the ball coming back at us, I think that will be a big difference. Yeah. I mean, from my point of view, and you know, as I said, you know, he's a great signing. I'm really looking for Bale in the, in the big matches against the Chelsea, the Arsenal, Man United. I really want him to come to the fore there and push us over the line. I think we've been matching these guys, but we've just not had enough to beat these guys. I'm looking for Bale to add that extra flamboyance, that, you know, that panache to get us across the line against these big guys. I don't care if Bale doesn't play against West Brom or, you know, all the other leagues. Or I don't care. As long as he plays well against the big teams and gets us those points, because that's what I think is really going to help us. That's my view. What do you think, Steve? Uh, I think... Um... Kamal's 15 to 20 goals is extraordinarily ambitious. I, yeah, so. I was just about to say that. <laughs> it's a wish, though, don't forget. It's a wish. <laughs> you asked what I want. I, want, I, I, want no, I, I agree. Don't forget, Steve, if you don't wish, if you dream, if you don't dream, they can't come true. Well, well I'm going to whip. I think 10's probably, 7 yeah. to 10 is probably closer to it. No, I mean, I think it, it's, it's, it's exciting times, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I just want, what I want us to do is to create more chances. I think under Pochettino, we didn't create enough chances. And I think Kane managed to get the amount of goals he did, sort of despite the way we played rather than because of the way we played. And it seems that we're making more chances. And I think with Bale, Bale will help us make more chances, which means that players like Kane and indeed Son and Mora, if they're playing in the same team, will score more goals. And that sort of goes against the let's get to one nil and hold it Mourinho mentality. But, you know, I think the way we played against Southampton, the play we got, play, the way we played against Man United shows that we can make make chances and we will score. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, I guess it'll be telling to see where Bale is at on when, when we do play West Ham, but um, I'm hoping for some direct running, some some fear in, in the defender's eyes and then just, you know, putting in crosses, corners, he's just going to be so useful to have. And I think it goes to show that we talk so much about Bale. It's almost like we forget about the rest of the team, but the rest of the team is so strong without him. It would have been a good transfer season, even if we had not got him. Bringing him in takes it over the top. Right, Jamal. Yeah. yeah. So does, just a quick question. I'll put this out. and You don't take too long to answer. Does the arrival of Bale push Delhi closer to the exit door? Come on. See? Very simply... Delhi, if wants to be in this team, as it should be for every single player, from Bell to Kane to Lloris, right? You've got to be, you've got to have some competition. There's no God-given right to be in the team. Delhi don't perform. Delhi ain't in the team, and it should go for every single player. Okay, Dave. I, I want, I want Ali to stay because I think he's got talents and skills and ability. Um, it's about mental attitude now. You know, are you prepared to hang on in there and compete for your place? The reality is people will get injured. You will get your opportunity. Yeah. It may not be in six or seven games, but you will get it. You know, we know Kane's going to get injured, don't we? We know an ankle's yeah. going to pop at some stage. We know that. Son played what appeared to be with a bit of a dodgy hamstring. You will get your chance. You've got to buckle down. You've got to do the work. Yeah. Jamal? Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's good that we didn't let him go. Even though I know in one of these videos I did say I think I think he's going to be one of the players we sold. Um, I'm happy he's still here. I'm happy he's still an option. And like like Steve said, 
someone's going to get injured. He's going to have his opportunity. He just needs to keep his head down, keep trying. And I'm sure the player is still in there, the one we all want to see. Yeah, I think the key for me is if he, when he gets, I 100% agree with Steve, he will get a chance, but he's got to take that chance. What I've seen so far is he hasn't grabbed both that chance and taken it by the scruff of the neck and made the most of it. He just ambled about and hasn't taken the chance. That's mm -hmm. my view anyway. So Agreed. he's got to take his chances when he comes. Agreed. Okay, guys, well, that's nearly going to wrap it up now. What I want to do is just spend two or three minutes talking about our favourite second team, which is West Ham. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Steve first. I want to go for a quick prediction on the score, Steve, and then we'll check on this after we do the post-match one. But what's your prediction? for? Well, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I think we're going to keep a clean sheet. Uh, I can hear the guffaws in the background. Uh, uh -huh. We should beat West Ham about 2-0. That's what we should be doing. However, there's always the local derby factor and the fact over the years, sort of West, we got closer to West Ham as a rival rather than Arsenal, just because Arsenal were being more successful at the time and West Ham weren't. So, I, I mean, I think, I think we should beat them. We should win about 2-0. I'd like to get, um, like us to have a clean sheet, but West Ham are a good team and they're proving it with the teams that they've competed with and beaten. So it's going to be a very difficult game. Yeah, OK. I think West Ham, this is their cup final, isn't it, Kamal? The Tottenham is their cup final. <laughs> they always, this is their cup I mean, final, they so they're going to yeah. do everything they can to beat yeah, us. Absolutely. But I they, think if you... at home, we should have enough to beat them. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think we can keep a clean sheet. I'm going to go 3-1 Tottenham. We're going to have, we'll be too strong for them. I'll take 3-1. I'll take 3-1. Kamal? Well, having uh, worked in West Ham, having worked in Newham for many, many years and, and mingled with uh, a lot of these hammers, uh, the, the, the problem West Ham have is they all they think that they should be better than us. They always think, but those days when Arsenal were doing really well, they always saw us as the weak link. When Chelsea were doing well, they saw us as the weak link. They said, well, at least we're, we, we, we should be better than Tottenham. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are not. They're nowhere near where we are. Over the years we've seen, they've actually been our feeder team in many ways. Um, and I think that, uh, but they're playing better than I've seen them play in years, to yeah, be honest with you. Yeah, I've watched their games and Antonio, the get out up front, He's incredible. I mean, he's holding on the ball, the goals that he scores. He's almost like a one-man team that's dragging yeah, them around. It's got him better. Um, and yeah. I think he's going to give us trouble. He's going to cause us trouble. I mean, we were 3-0 up at West Ham last season when Mourinho's first game. And we we just about clung on for a 3-2. Um, so, I'm going to go 3-2 again. Okay. Jamal? Okay. So, um, West Ham have been playing very well. And... Um, they're, they're gonna, you know, mid season. I see them have finishing mid season again, which would be, you know, what they expect. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be ambitious. I'm saying 5 1. I don't see us keeping a clean sheet, yeah. but uh, I see, I see a Harry, I see, uh, you know, maybe Harry came one goal, another, another brace that. for Son and a brace for Bale. Easy. <laughs> I can't see <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm all for Jamal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sanchez, did you see Dyer again today? He got done for pace again, gave away another uh, penalty. He said he's, he's resting for our match. Sorry. He's resting for our match. You know, he's taking it easy. He thinks that what's what it is. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> that's an issue for us. Okay, guys, listen. Great chat as always. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. We'll see you all again after the uh, West Ham match, the post-match analysis. Jamal, did you want to close? Yeah, please, absolutely. Um, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. We uh, we appreciate all your feedback. Everyone on the Facebook and Twitter. Um, hope you hope you enjoy, and we hope to hear back from you guys. Yeah, guys, and don't forget to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages, you know, and, and like and subscribe there. Thanks, guys. See you later. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>